When my husband and I found out we were expecting, we were overjoyed. We'd been trying for almost two years. Some short weeks later, he spent all day building a beautiful crib of deep cherry oak. My mother was almost equally ecstatic. Her first grandchild. That Christmas, she gifted us a gorgeous, hand-painted porcelain doll. We kept it propped up on a little nightstand in the nursery, decorated in soft shades of pink and awaiting the arrival of our baby. I was seven months pregnant when the accident happened. It was icy. We were driving over a steep hill with no railing. The driver in the next lane must have felt his tires slip. He overcorrected. The simplest mistakes can bear the most catastrophic consequences. The paramedics said it was a miracle that I crawled out of the wreckage with only minor injuries. They were pulling me away, telling me not to look. I looked. I gazed into my husband's glassy eyes, still open yet empty of life. His body was mangled and motionless, spread out on the embankment, surrounded by a million glittering pieces of shattered glass. For now, I live with my mother, the doctor's idea. She looks at me with unmistakable pity as I shuffle around listlessly, bearing the weight of single motherhood, holding my precious baby in my arms. She's always been such a quiet child, never cried, as if she's making up for the deafening clamor of chaos, the carnage that brought her into this world too soon. She's smaller than a typical newborn, but beautiful, perfect. She has golden blonde hair, just like mine, and deep green eyes like my husband's. My days and nights are consumed with caring for her. It gives me purpose, breathes some meaning back into my life. I wake early each morning and warm her bottle. I don't think I'm imagining my mother's disapproving glances, but I wasn't able to breastfeed after the accident. I smile to myself as it dribbles down her chubby chin. In the evenings, I sit in my mother's rocking chair and sing softly to her as the daylight fades. I cradle her in my arms and bring her tiny hand up to my cheek. When darkness finally settles in, I lean over the wooden rails of her crib, going goodnight to my sweet baby. My mother suggests we put the crib in storage. It's been three years, she reminds me. And in an instant, I can hear the screeching tires, see the broken glass, feel the thick, warm blood trickling down my inner thighs. I long for my sweet, fatherless baby to grow into a little girl, a young woman, knowing how loved she was, how I ached for her long before I had the chance to meet her. I stroke her porcelain skin and possibly smooth and soft and perfect. I gaze into her bright, glassy eyes that close when I tilt her head back and lower her into the crib. Her little body so delicate, so fragile, that the slightest slip of the hand could cause it to shatter into a million glittering pieces. <laughs>